Hello and welcome to On The Podcast of Yacht Couple. This is Siddharth here. I'm Arjun. And I'm Dr. Shish. I was just going to ask everybody how their weekend was. It wasn't too bad. I uh, had a pretty decent weekend with a lot of editing of podcasts and good feedback from a lot of friends and family and subscribers to our early episodes. So it really energizes us to do better work and you would like this topic too. My highlight was when my dad called in saying, can you give me a link to YouTube so I can hear you? And I was like, this man has never used a smartphone in his life and he wants to check it out. So I was like, wow, dad, thank you. Super support. So holler out to the whole family and everybody. That's awesome. He should hear the previous episode. Huh? I'm sure you had a lot to say about him. <laughs> I'm sure he did. Okay, so what are we going to talk about, Sid? So Arjun and Dr. Sheesh, do you consider yourself to be handsome? A pretty handsome, what's the take? What's pretty handsome? Let me rephrase that question. So Arjun and Dr. Sheesh, do you consider yourself to be attractive? I think I consider myself to be fairly attractive. Dr. Sheesh is a stud. I'm a full-on scud missile. Macha. <laughs> <laughs> or at least I like to think I am, you know. My mental impression of what I look like and maybe what I look like in physical reality might be two different things. But yeah, in my head, I'm... Good to go. Yeah, thankfully you're married and you're good to go. So that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> that attitude works. Where do you stand, Sid? I think I'm okay. I have not too much to comment on that. But I did read an article somewhere where they were saying that when we look at the mirror, we tend to think that we are at least 20-30% more handsome or pretty than we actually are. So that's what they call it, no? Your cognitive bias. But that's contrary to what the guys in, what is what is that, uh, who are they, Lakme, Dove or some, Dove I think, which did this advertisement where uh, they did the social studies, where they put two doors and they said that if you're pretty, walk through this door and if you're not so pretty, you walk through this door. And the majority of women would walk through, or at least a certain population of women would walk through that. So it was like an enlightenment point which said that, you know, you need to believe that, you know, you are beautiful. I think that has to do more with self-esteem than physical beauty. A lot of people are extremely, that's the word I use, attractive and not physical beauty because physical beauty is just, oh, great skin, sharp nose, perfect jawline, a great body, X, Y, Z. But when I'm saying attractive, I'll tell you things that attract me of the opposite sex is the smile, the way they talk, the sense of humor. And obviously, the looks also count, but it isn't 100% only looks. There are a lot of people who I know who are extremely attractive. If you look at only gauge them from the looks basis, I would say they are probably a 6 on 10. But because of their personality, they just shoot up to 110. So that's attractive. Are we talking about is beauty an evolutionary advantage for somebody? Do they get an advantage if they're beautiful? So basically, do attractive people get more opportunity in life? Exactly. That's an interesting question because, you know, there is, I mean, we've grown up in like from school and offices and we always tend to put down someone who is better looking, who gets an opportunity saying, oh, that, yeah, he got it because they're good looking or they got the job because they're good looking. A pretty girl always gets a better job. A good-looking guy always gets a better opportunity. We've heard those stories. I mean, more girls or the opposite sex gravitates towards a more attractive person. So the cool kids in school usually consist of the most attractive kids. Or rich kids. Might be that ugly fellow, but he's rich, but he's part of the clique. So I'm just saying that there is an advantage initially... But not in the long run. Maybe straight off the bat, probably yes. Like you say, probably to get the foot in the door, as they say. But then eventually I feel your other characteristics have to come out. But have you guys ever had an occasion to see where like maybe in your relative workplaces or fields of uh, expertise that, oh, someone may have gotten by just purely on physical attractiveness without having the necessary qualification? Let's take marriage. Especially in an Indian system where we have arranged marriage system. It's always generally based on first the looks. Is the girl good looking? Is the girl fair? And only then afterwards you want to know whether the girl is educated, not educated. It's always the first thing which we look at is always are they beautiful? So I compare this now to when we go and order a meal in a restaurant. 
So the first thing you eat with is your eyes. So you want to know that your food is presented well. And if you look at most of the restaurants and everything which do today, that's what they do until you taste it. Ambiance of the restaurants is nice. It starts from there too. Yeah, it starts from there. But I'm talking about the food generally now. Yeah. Right. So that's what we're going there to do. So does it look good? Only after that do you taste it. So the same way is there this perception that, okay, if somebody is good looking, then we automatically gravitate towards that person. And then afterwards, we make up our mind whether this person is smart, not smart, whatever. But that initial click you get, which is this person is attractive, they have more substance, they are healthier, they are whatever, they look better. Agreed. Because there's something called the first impression is the best impression. And when you meet somebody who is attractive, uh, who's handsome or beautiful or something like that, it automatically becomes a better impression, sadly. Because your brain generalizes and simplifies your whole cognitive process because this is the thing that you're looking for. That first two seconds of, of meeting a person and that's the default thing. You can say what you like, but that's the truth. I agree with that because also it's just not about the looks alone. Because you're not gauging them on the looks. Just because they're attractive, you tend to subconsciously confer all the other qualities to them. Like, oh, they might be intelligent. They might be, their personality might be attractive. They could be like great people. But you automatically confer all those other attributes to them. And that, that may not be true as well. That's the cognitive bias which I'm talking about. Even if you see any kind of comics that we have read, the good is tall, fair, good looking and all of that. And the evil is always dark, ugly and with all the bad attributes. That's the whole thing. Your whole cognitive bias is based on that. All the gods are beautiful. All the evil people are extremely ugly. It's called the halo effect if I'm right. Another example I can give you for that is the music industry. So you have these great vocalists who can sing. But when you've got a great vocalist and a face to put along with it, then it's like superb for the producer that they're like, yeah, this is the one which I want over the other one. Maybe the other one can sing a little bit better. So we lose that essence. No, that's a beautiful point. Because if you see all the top singers in the world are gorgeous or beautiful people. Look at Beyonce, look at Kylie Minogue, look at anybody. They are generally just super attractive, super marketable. It's just a perfect world that's been built around. Who was that lady who came on um, America's Got Talent, that lady? You're thinking about uh, Britain's Got Talent, that was Susan Boyle. Susan Boyle, Susan Boyle. Yes, yeah, so that was a standing example of, you know, what stereotypical reaction that, oh, this person's rubbish because, you know, they don't look the part. But the minute she started singing because you gave her the opportunity to sing and you gave her a stage, she shone so bright. That is my example of this whole thing, which is you have those beautiful people who might be talented and it's great for them. But some of those people are missing those opportunities because they're not as good looking as uh, the others. Absolutely. I think Susan Boyle is a brilliant example taken by Dr. Sheesh, which kind of highlights and explains the cognitive biases that all of us have and all of us are guilty of. But going back to the original question, is being beautiful an evolutionary advantage? Arjun, you studied anthropology, so we would love to hear you pitch in for this. Scientifically speaking, or at least anthropologically speaking, it's not really true. When the numbers back it up that it's not true. There's this uh, thing called the correlation coefficient. Okay? Correlation coefficient lies between number one and minus one and in the middle is zero so along that entire chart number one is most likely will be attracted to the most likely and minus one is the most likely will be attracted to the most unlikely let me put this in perspective number one is the tallest person will be attracted to the tallest person Minus one is the tallest person will be attracted to the shortest person. Zero is the tallest person could be attracted to either the shortest or the tallest. Substitute tallest for any value, physical or mental. Now the highest correlation coefficient is 0.9. And that is, you will find someone more attractive if they are of the same race, religion or ethnicity followed by point four, which is you will find someone attractive 
because of their personality and intelligence. And coming in lowest at point two is actually physical attributes. Are you serious? Yeah. I'm shocked at that. We always assume that beauty gets a, a, like a heads up or a foot in the door and that what prevails. But the correlation coefficient has been studied across like thousands of thousands of couples and partners and even in jobs like when i'm interviewing someone you're engaging someone in a partnership so the correlation coefficient also applies to an interview so you will probably select someone a highest based on race ethnicity religion two followed by personality and intelligence and third is actually physical attributes so it's interesting that overall physical attributes actually are the least successful attributes to have wow so we've been so mean to these beautiful people all our lives we've been suckers dude <laughs> we've just been suckers the science doesn't back it up i had a hunch and that's why i disagreed earlier saying that they wouldn't have an advantage purely because you see a lot of problems associated with extremely beautiful people i'm not saying smart or 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 average looking or above average looking i'm talking about these poster girl poster boy kind of people they have a lot of awkwardness because they never had to do anything ever since they were 12 13 when they hit puberty yeah. to make friends to do anything to get anything it was very easy yeah. and as the years go by they grow older they start having self doubt saying oh are people only gravitating towards me because i'm pretty is it only for the body is it not for my sense of humor so they end up being also being boring people because a lot of people are coming towards them and being bored becomes a sort of a defense mechanism exactly to push away these unnecessary people but by the time they 30 odd they don't know who their true friends are or they don't know what a right relationship is or a normal relationship is and it just goes down south very quickly you're saying that their their defense mechanism is they're bored of you really fast or they act like they're bored it started off like that so that they it becomes a filter they're like okay if i'm too interesting then anyway there's people throwing themselves on me yeah i mean being boring is not the exact thing but i'm just saying they build up different kind of defenses or they build walls which ultimately crumble very very quickly and if you see whether it's marilyn munro or look at the whole bollywood and hollywood it's filled with really really depressed beautiful people it isn't because that they're beautiful it isn't because work pressure it isn't because of lifestyle it is just that it is they just live in such a plastic world and these points which i mentioned earlier that your mental psyche just goes for a complete toss and there's a lack of realism or a grasp on reality and they just want normalcy but they don't know what normalcy is no i think you you made that point early on when somebody is just told all the time you're really pretty you're really beautiful and they get whatever they want really easily early on in their life they don't really need to create any other skills skill sets exactly and that's what happens but the problem is that's fine early on but when it comes down the line when you're when you have a job and you've got different dynamics in with your life going on you're found uh, not really ready to be able to cope with all these other dimensions of life that's when you you find yourself all alone no when life requires you start showing skills and then you're found lacking in those skills it's a kind of slap in the face for that person because they just found wanting and they found lacking not all of them i mean there is beauty with brains and that is the most amazingly attractive thing you see the most beautiful person both physically mentally in every aspect and they're super smart i think it would hit a it would beat your point 9 and hit a 1 on the correlation scale because that is the epitome of it those are one in a million agreed but i'm saying that also exists just we're not saying that all pretty or beautiful people are stupid or depressed that's not what we're trying to say what i'm trying to say is that people assume that pretty people or beautiful people are x y z and put them on a pedestal but higher they go harder they fall and most often that happens in the worlds that we're talking of hollywood and bollywood and the whole modeling scene you know priyanka chopra 
has this saying where you know when they ask her what's your most likable feature you know i think the person who was asking the question was asking her about her beauty but uh, what she actually said was it was her confidence and i am of a person of belief that when you wear your confidence on your sleeve you're the most attractive person i have noticed one thing like always go through these phases where i put on weight i lose weight and i have noticed that when i am a little bit chubbier i feel like okay you know what maybe i'm not so confident but when i lose a little bit of weight i feel all the more confident but it's all within your head it's not what you're still the same person you know everything is the same it's just what level of confidence you have on your sleeve is what the other person starts to feel like okay this is a con- confident person and uh, they know how to take care of themselves and that shows that you know that they are a strong personality automatically and that is attractive and feel we don't look at that as an aspect of beauty so it's there in the 90 per- 90% of people who feel that you know they're not on par with those people who are that 10% of really beautiful people out there they just need to change their attitude and realize that you know maybe their beauty is there and they just have to realize it but again dr shish that's true coming back to that correlation coefficient confidence does trump physical qualities it's just that we've just not really put it out there because personally i believe a confident person is about 10 times more attractive than a physically attractive person with said physical attributes confidence trumps that any day hence always we always look at that relationship and we say that guy is going out with that girl ah why yeah what is what does she see in him what does he see in her yeah yeah that always happens but and even we are guilty of saying oh he must be loaded he must be rich yes yes or or she must be so stupid and dumb we have these preconceived notions of this halo effect or reverse halo effect correct of presuming the worst of the other people and hence we have some sayings like dumb blondes not all blondes are dumb of course not so you basically your eyes and your brain they do a tag team of sorts and just trick you into assuming and believing a lot of things which isn't true because if you look at in nature even in nature there's something called the golden ratio which is 1 is to i don't know 1.6 or something like that so that is about symmetry it's about beauty it's all of that but again coming back that but that is just symmetry that's just a geometrical shape the more symmetrical you are the more attractive you are right exactly but symmetry does not decide if that person can speak well is he a good person does he beat up his wife is he is he a philander by the way i have to tell you guys this dr she speaking about symmetry guess who among famous people that we know obviously because i'm sure there are a lot of symmetrical people walking around but guess which famous actor has been gauged the most perfectly symmetrical man george clooney tom cruise scientifically i'm not talking about everyone going the world's sexiest or who is gorgeous or whatever but scientifically the world's most symmetrical man is denzel washington oh denzel washington when he doesn't laugh or smile have you seen him laugh it is a scariest shit that is why he acts in all serious action movies him laughing is horribly asymmetrical <laughs> from symmetry to asymmetry <laughs> some good looking to ugly fellow but i found that damn surprising denzel washington is scientifically acknowledged to be that shape and that feature and him physically is acknowledged to be the most symmetrical man yeah look at uh, somebody like morgan freeman or james earl jones they are not the most prettiest people but oh my god what a voice they have the deep baritone i mean that it's ever sexy right for a lot of people yeah you know i find another thing which um, which i kind of i feel i don't know whether this is uh, real or not real but i feel like as you become familiar with somebody's face it tends to get a little bit more attractive to you oh that's a good point classic case of these actors who come in and they start acting for the first time they look terrible they don't look half as beautiful as what they look when i look at them like 10 years later down the line one is there is always you know some enhancement surgeries or whatever but barring that now let's say somebody who hasn't done it like let's take vijay the tamil actor so for me when he joined and what he is today oh my god there's so much of difference in that so i feel like when somebody's face you just keep seeing it over and over and over again you know it doesn't even if they initially you feel oh he's not really an attractive person but then slowly over time the other dynamics kick in and then they start looking you know a uh, more appealing to you So do you think that has anything like do you think familiarity 
can lead to that i guess so uh, because it's not familiarity it's time because you don't know vijay personally do you no i don't of course not <laughs> exactly so it is about time he has seen his work you seen certain things that you liked the way he's reacted to certain political situations or probably the kind of charity he does i'm not too sure what exactly those attributes are but there's something that over time that has attracted or you found him a little more appealing versus what it was earlier but tiger shroff's first movie and what he is now is is like is really yeah but i i don't know personally i really don't find tiger shroff attractive <laughs> he could be in it no it's not about you years. finding him attractive or anything i'm just saying that you know wh- how he looks on screen he looks a lot more better on screen is it all the from the back end editing or is it that you know since the face has become so familiar on the screen it's like okay he's improved uh... no i i think dr sheesh just has a man crush on tiger shroff that's pretty much it yeah because if you notice <laughs> if you notice he started with vijay but he really wanted to get tiger shroff into the conversation <laughs> my god we're being too harsh <laughs> and judgmental and hopefully he'll find you attractive over time ashish over time but i get what dr sheesh is saying about the over time bit over time yes people do seem to be more attractive people you like to and you gravitate to do seem to be more attractive and i'm not talking about even romantically we're talking about friends or people you work with people you start to like do tend to start looking more and more attractive you don't see them the way let's say if you walk into a room and someone looks at them for the first time and they tell you like oh this person's a bit so and so he's a bit pudgy or his nose is out of whack and you never noticed anything like that before because your the like you have for this person is completely overshadowed any physical attribute that you may have found lacking for want of a better word very true uh the reverse is also true which is beautiful people who get into it only for physical beauty beauty fades over time you age everybody becomes old and then what do you do there's an interesting point that i left out about the correlation coefficient okay we've already this we've already discussed that point 9 is towards religion ethnicity race point 6 is towards personality intelligence and physical attributes is low at point 2 but here's the kicker the point 2 of physical attributes is obviously physical attributes not obvious physical attributes count for point 6 which is actually way higher than your point 4 of personality and intelligence now coming back to what we discussed about what does this person see in that person what is that person of you just finding someone you like but it's like no there's just something about that person here's the kicker point 6 of physical attributes you can't literally put your finger on are size and shape of ear lobe distance between the eyes slope of the forehead length of the middle finger length of a toe things like that shape of your nostrils are you serious it sounds like crap i am dead serious point 6 1% of the correlation coefficient are physical attributes like those that you cannot your mind for some reason doesn't you cannot put your finger on it it's like that would explain a lot of foot fetish <laughs> it could explain a lot of fetishes in fact <laughs> because there's so many things uh, i'm not saying that anyone even scientifically it's not like anyone says yeah these are the reasons for this you know we like bigger earlobes because people could hear a saber tooth cat from miles away no it's got nothing to do with that these are things that are even stunned a lot of anthropologists because they're like hang on a sec how does the brain even know that's a thing wow arjun that's absolutely fascinating this particular tidbits of facts that you just threw at us which has obviously even stunned anthropologists as you said wouldn't have crossed our idle mind at any given point of time unless we read it or until you told it yeah for me you know at the end of the day arjun what you said was um, these are things which never crossed my mind but having said that i feel like i'm a more simpler person and you know i'm one of those guys who will always be thinking that way but i feel a lot has to do with what is there within you 
each one needs to just realize that we have great attributes within us. But unless and until you put out those attributes, it might be your smile, it might be the way you walk, it might be anything, the way you talk. Unless you put it out there, you're not giving the other person the chance to look at you and say that, okay, this person has a dimension which I could be attracted to. Absolutely. So yes, I mean, everybody are beautiful people. Everybody is super attractive. Just be confident. Be there. Believe in yourself. And as Arjun says, everybody has got a fighting chance. I never said that. <laughs> <laughs> Sindhu said it for you. Okay. <laughs> so that wraps up this episode of The Odd Couple. Thank you so much for joining us. We would love to listen to you. Keep sharing. Keep liking. Keep subscribing to our podcast. I feel like, you know, if you guys got some great topics which we can discuss and, you know, if you've got uh, some comments to make, it all helps us to improve as we go along. We are still a young podcast and we really like, we're learning on the go. So yeah, your feedback is always welcome and, you know, it helps us a lot. Since we're talking topic of good looks and beauty and being attractive, guys, this is the same problem with purebred dogs also. So you, everybody wants a... Uh, Irish setter or a beautiful Labrador and all of that but even stray dogs are equally attractive over time once you adopt them so adopt don't shop keep listening to the odd couple thank you guys